guys, so before the video starts, I just want to know, I just shot a new remix, um, it's in the description, it's just on Spotify, and it'll be on my SoundCloud and YouTube pretty soon, um, but yeah, it's just a remix of this band called Striking Matches, their track Shameless, it's pretty cool, I really appreciate if you would check it out, and here's the video, thanks. So here we are, we have this project file, um, it's the same one that's for free download in the description, you can just get it down there on, like, my Google Drive or whatever, um, and yeah, not too much going on. We just have it set to 125 BPM, which is a pretty standard house tempo if you see my other videos or if you're familiar with making house music. Um, but if you're brand new, yeah, like usually between like 125 and like 130 is pretty good for this style of music. Um, and what I've done is I have dragged in some noise, this noise sample. I'll show you. You can also download this for free in the description. Um, it's just this sample. So I've dragged it in, and what I've done is I have it warped, but I've set it to repitch mode. Um, and this is a little bit advanced if you're a beginner, but basically it just plays your sample the cleanest, um, because like complex or texture or tones or beats or complex pro, they warp it in kind of weird ways, where what repitch mode does is it plays it back as if it was unwarped, and you just move the, the transpose up. Because like if you don't warp it, I'll show you, if you have it unwarped, and you start pitching it, you see it moves the time. Um, and so this is essentially like if I just fine tune that and then got it perfectly in a bar loop. Um, and then all I've done on that is I've just put a little bit of an auto filter on. Just to sort of give it even more of a lo-fi sound. Um, because it tends to be the case that like there's not a whole lot of high end in these tracks. Um, so it really helps to do stuff like this. It's like little details that will make the big thing, the finished product, more uh, more interesting and more full. Um, so after this, I'm going to drag in this sample loop that I have in here. And you'll notice it's not warped properly. So we're going to unwarp it and then hit warp again. Yes. And then we're just going to use these markers that are uh, pretty useful. Now this one we got to zoom in and click like there to make one um and then we're just going to move that back to here oh whoops okay cool and then we can just duplicate this so that should be sounding like this also i'm going to pitch it down minus three now i'm putting a little bit of you can hear that's a pretty solid move I'm just putting a little bit of auto filter on here too. You don't want to go too low because you don't want it to be like that. But I usually just listen for like the top of where it sort of sits. Like this doesn't have a lot of highs, but it you, it starts around like here as far as the high end goes. So I'm just adding a bit of resonance there. And you can hear that's making a little bit more lo-fi as well, texturally and sonically. Um, and then I'm gonna put a bit warmer on there, the saturator preset. You can hear what that's going to do, it's going to bring out that resonance a little bit more, and it's just going to make the whole thing a little bit more like rough around the edges and, and lo-fi. Um, so I'm going to program in some drums now, and then I'll show you what I did. <laughs> So I've sort of filled this out a bit more. Um, I've added a few elements. I did all the drums, and I'm going to explain that. Um, and I've also added this 303 bass. Um, so there isn't necessarily like a bass line that's following the chords, but there's bass elements that get across a low end and establish that in the track, so it's okay. You don't always have to have your bass line. Just be like a sub playing these notes, or like, you know, like some low, like, saw wave or something with a filter on it um you can as long as you have low end that's what matters you just need to have that like thumping bass um so between the kick this tom thing that i have that i'll show you and this 303 we have a pretty solid low end going on here and the track is all right um so i'll just show you the drums first real quick so basically it's four tracks and it sounds like this So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I just have a kick that I programmed in. Um, 
I didn't do really anything to that. It's just a matter of getting the level right um, with everything else. And I have the sample. I'll show you. I have the sample side chain to it as well as the 303. You can hear that pumping. They're pretty lightly side chained, but there is a side chain there. And that's pretty straightforward. You know, you just drop on the compressor um, and then you open up this little thing and there's the side chain there. And then you choose what you want to route it to. Um, and when I'm side chaining, I always set it to the like post FX setting, because um, I find if I do post mixer, nothing comes through. And pre effects, you don't want that because you want it to be like what you're hearing, you know. Pre effects would be like like if I put a reverb on this kick, and then I put pre effects, it would sound like it wouldn't it wouldn't have the reverb. Uh, if that makes any sense, but I like to have it just be whatever the kick truly sounds like. Um, so. Yeah, so for the drums though, I so I have the kick. Um and like I said, I didn't really do anything to that. That already had a pretty nice sound to it. It's just a matter of finding samples that sort of have the dirty like lo fi uh feel to them and get that across. Um now I have this tom here. And that's just a straightforward nine oh nine tom sample. All of these samples are in this little folder that I have for free in the description. Um and I just programmed this don't 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 like this program this uh common pattern i'll play it with the kick and you can hear but you can hear there's so much low end from the kick and this playing that it really doesn't matter that we don't have a bass line because like i said we just need some low end in the track um and so i just have this pattern and then the end i moved it up a fifth which is seven semitones so like this is c so g um and what I did here was I put this logic swing on here. It's one of the ones that comes, if you go in your Ableton uh, packs or whatever, you go to the core library and then swing and group. These logic ones are pretty solid. Um, and I use that because normally I would draw it in by hand, you know, you just do something like that. But it's a little harder to be per so precise with that. And I wanted it to be, since I'm also swinging the hi-hats, I wanted it to be very um, precise. So I used that logic swing so I could also just apply that to the hi-hats um, and then it would all be the same. And you don't really want it to always be super tight like that, but, you know, it, it definitely does help. Um, and for stuff like this, you want it to, like with your main groove. Um, now I have the hi-hats and I, I basically just made this drum rack for all the sort of like percussion. I have this ride sample I didn't use, but it, um... Yeah, I don't usually use drum racks for my, like, just straight up drums. I prefer to have them all in separate tracks because you can easily, um, or easier get to the levels and, and get everything leveled out right. When you have a drum rack, it tends to get kind of messy. But for all of your percussion, it's actually a pretty helpful way to organize it. Um, when you just have a lot of things. The idea is if you have a lot of things that need to be around the same level and, like, the same sort of, uh, vol or, yeah, I guess the same volume. You know, it's easy to just put them in a drum rack and be able to work with it. So that is actually a good technique for that. Um, and I didn't put any processing on that. I really didn't put any processing on the drums at all. Like I said, it's just a matter of finding samples that have that sound. It's better to start with the sound that you want and accentuate that or just sort of let that, you know, exist, I guess, <laughs> um, than to try and make something that isn't there, if, if that makes any sense. Now, I'm not saying don't like try to color your sounds but i'm saying it definitely helps to use like these like dirty 909 samples rather than like take the ableton 909 for example and try to do a million things to get it sounding a certain way because chances are you probably won't get it there and it's not going to sound as good as just using like like these ones are recorded into a tape machine stuff like that um so yeah, anyway, I didn't really process those, but um, it really is just a matter of getting all the levels right. You can hear the track. It still just sounds pretty solid. Um, now, yeah, so there's not really too much there. I just sort of took the patterns. People ask me a lot about the patterns. Um, it's pretty straightforward, really. You just want to start with these offbeat hi-hats, the, this one, and then you can throw in little accents on the 16th notes, if that makes any sense. So if I set this to like a 1 16th grade, this is like a quarter note would be like this from here to here. An eighth note will be like from here to here. And then a 16th note will be from here to here. 
And the idea is you start with the eighth notes and then just sort of uh, add in little sixteenth note things to accentuate it, which is what I did here with this open, with this closed hi hat and the rim shot. Um, so other than that, I just have this clap. And what I did was I took the sample that is in the description, the one I was talking about, all the free ones. You can hear that had a bit of a long tail on it. And I wanted it to be a little bit shorter and snappier. So I used, you can see the fades to just make it a quick clap um, without the reverb tail. Um, so to do that, if you're in Ableton 10, you have to, you just hit A. If you're on the automation view, then you'll be seeing this. If you're on this, then just hit A again. And then these come up on the edges, like when you go up to audio clips. Um, and if you're not in automation view, then you should already have uh, this enabled. So there's really not too much there. Like I said, it was just a matter of, like with drums, I really don't usually do too much processing. I just try to get them all leveled out right, and uh, that usually does the trick. Um, and you generally want your kick, you can hear, to kind of be like the loudest thing that's so and is um, really hitting hard over top of everything else. Um, it's, there was actually this one thing I read, I remember Noisy, I think, who are like, I know they're like German bass, but they said the lower something is, the more power you want it to have in your mix. And that's like a really good guideline to go by, because like I said, your kick and bass need to be your loudest elements, and uh, then everything else just sort of sits on top of that. Like, you wouldn't want your clap to be super powerful, because like, like, say if I turn that up, I'll show you. <laughs> It just sounds kind of weird and unbalanced, but um, having the kick be the last thing really makes the mix. Um, now the last thing I have here is just this pretty simple 303 patch that I made. I'm actually going to turn this filter down a little, um, but that's not too much. I just took analog, um, and I made this little synth. I turned off oscillator 2, just oscillator 1 on the default saw wave. I set the amp envelope like this, so I turned off the release. I guess it's on 5 milliseconds, but that's just like the lowest setting. I set the sustain down all the way and then the decay's down pretty low. Um, so that's sounding like this. I'm going to turn off the side chain real quick and I'll turn off the effects. So that's just like a saw wave. And then the filter is where the 303 sound comes from. So the key is you put the envelope on it, but not too much. Like this is just the default setting actually. And then I just turned down the decay on the envelope and kept the sustain at the default setting. And then you get this this kind of bass. And then the other key is to keep the frequency within a certain range. Because, like up here, that doesn't really sound like a old 303. But as I go down, that's where you get that like juicy kind of bass sound. Um, so after that, I just did the pretty straightforward standard processing. Just a little bit of a filter, just to cut out a little bit of high end, um, and like I said, contribute to the little details of making this whole thing sound kind of lo-fi. Um, and then of course, a bit warmer, <laughs> just to really fatten it up and make it warmer. Um, now other than that, I just side chain into the kick. And there you go. That's the, that's how you make this. Now as far as structuring, um... I have a few other videos on that. I'm not going to go over that too much in this video. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out my new remix. It's in the description. Uh, thanks, everybody, for the support. Check out my sample packs as well. And I hope you have a great day.